Do more of our weekend analysis, starting with Manchester United, who are really buoyed on, driven on by a sense of injustice at Old Trafford. What they thought was injustice, because uh, when Brentford scored their opening goal just before half-time, they had Matthias de Ligt standing on the sideline getting treatment. It was a much better second half from Manchester United. What else was, was positive, would you say, about their performance? I think the front three. I think you see, we also about Marcus Rashford always better suited on the left, but he actually played on the right. I thought it was one of his best games we've seen this season. Hoyland, I think he's starting to look a player. I do. I was really impressed from a couple of weeks ago away in Port, so he put a real shift in. Outstanding again at the weekend. Then Ganacho on the left side scores, you know, scores a scores a great goal. So I think the combination of that front three is maybe something that can sort of keep Manchester United going over these next few weeks. Look you know what I'd say about those goals? They were Man United goals, if, if you understand what I mean. Like, you know, great goals, you know, from attacking players, great finish, the crossing from Rashford, the volley, showing a real sort of confidence and almost football arrogance that you'd always associate with Manchester United. We obviously haven't seen that for a while, but, uh, you know, hopefully from them. We'll see it a little few, uh, One, more in the future. Sorry, Jamie. One thing I didn't mention at the top, Aaron, about you was your spell at Nice, where you had contact with Ineos, of course, were, were the owners of, of Nice, and Dave Brailsford, who's now in, in such a significant role at, at Manchester United. What impressions did you did you have of, of him and of Ineos? Yeah, I mean, um, they came in and, um, you know, they wanted to uh, invest a lot into Nice and, and make that, you know... Uh, a sort of hub in, in European football and I think um, you know their ambition um, and Sir Jim as well um, you know being a Manchester United fan and him having the chance then to, to own in them I think um, you know they'll do an unbelievable job there it's just going to take a little so. bit of time I think um, they are very driven people and uh, they're, they're only used to you know being the best at what, what they do so I think not that easy um, though is it no it's not but I think obviously I spending a bit of time with them as well um, and in their company I think you know, it's never easy, is it, in the Premier League to go and just, um, you know, challenge and compete again. But I think their, um, with their ambition and their ideas, I think they will have a successful so spell. I'm not sure if you can clear this up or not, that you actually had an yeah. experience with a, a friend of ours. I mean, you, you, you look around Manchester United's training ground? Yeah. Who um, you showed you around? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> Gary, it wasn't <laughs> we were told it was busy. Gary Neville. Yeah, I think he was busy that day. Yeah, um, he's, always, he's born busy. No, it was the um, assistant manager at the time, was it? Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name, but... Um... Oh, so you made an impression? Yeah. <laughs> it's very I mean... disappointing. Jamie was hoping to blame Gary yeah. Neville for the reason he didn't <laughs> well, join well, well, Manchester Gary United. Did. He tried to tap up Stephen Gerrard, you see, so I was obviously thinking he tried to tap up you, and he, you know, he failed twice, didn't he, miserably. <laughs> so it wasn't Gary, no. No, it wasn't Gary, no. But it wasn't the, uh, the main man? No, Ferguson, no, no, he was away. Like, he, he was on the phone um, a few times and um, trying to convince me to go there, but... The initial thought was for them to loan me back, but I, I wanted to go on then. And uh, what about what about Liverpool? Were they knocking as well? Yeah, there were some discussions as well with um, with Rafa. So, um, but at the time they couldn't really get to that fee. Um, I think they were trying to. They could do something around I don't know the million or two million mark, but then I think it went above that towards the five and. This is the Football Show. Let's turn our attention to the game at Old Trafford. Manchester United came from behind to beat Brentford 2-1, their first win after five without one in all competitions. So, how much was this needed for United? And Eric Ten Hag in particular. Yeah, I think it was. We all know that there's scrutiny after every game, isn't there? So when Manchester United win, it's have Manchester United turn the corner. When they lose, it's like, oh, there's, there's a lot of pressure on, on Ten Hag. So, yeah, he needed that win, especially at half-time when you, you looked at, at the scoreline. But I thought the performance was so much better in the second half. I thought they looked a lot more organised on and off the ball. I thought the way that they, they pressed the ball was good. I thought Hoyland set that off and, and the other players went because at times we've said when you've looked at Manchester United's press it's been all over the place and, and teams have been able to get through them quite easily but in the second half that looked better it looked a bit more aggressive a bit more intensity and then there was more fluidity going forward so there's certainly lots more positives to take I think from from that second half performance than obviously the first half I think Ted Hag said that they were angry at half time they were angry with that decision um, the delict decision where he had to go off and, and they scored from, from that set piece so whether they took that into the second half as well I'm not sure but yeah you've, you've got to give them praise for that that performance in the second half yeah let's pick up on the second half in particular then because I I, I'm, I don't want to assume because we know what that makes uh, <laughs> but I, I I would suggest you have seen you have been in or you have played against teams where 
the opposition players don't quite trust what the manager is saying to them or don't quite buy in to the messages coming to them. But that second half, did that show a team that actually were, were, had bought in and, and, and were playing for Eric Ten Hag as well as for themselves? Because, number one, you play for yourself, do you not? Uh, it's very difficult to say that because you look at... The, they've been on a... Uh a run of not winning in five games. So what's the comments after all those halves of football? I think Eric Ten Hag said, we played a very good half of football, but if they were playing a team, i.e. a Spurs a couple of weeks ago, that wouldn't have been 1-0 at half-time. It'd have been more. And that's the, that's the difficult thing. Without being disrespectful to Brentford, probably not clinical enough, probably could have seen the game out a little bit better themselves. Against a better team, they'd have, they'd have probably got beat again, and, that, and that's the concerning part. However, second half, like you say, uh, a bit of a better performance, but it's easy when you're 1-0 down because you've got nothing to lose. It's like, let's go, go out and do something. Let's try and change the narrative around things. So I don't necessarily buy into the fact of they're playing for him and what he's trying to achieve. I think there's a, almost a sense of a pride from within as well. And maybe the players in the tunnel might have said something to, to each other. Listen, we're not privy to it, we don't know. Um, but he's, he's still on borrowed time for me. He's still finding things very difficult. But one thing that we know with, with Manchester United fans is, is that they're very loyal to the managers. They do stay behind them. And I think there was an acknowledgement from him to almost a, a nod to the crowd to, to appreciate what they've done for him. I think it also helped, didn't it, that they scored so early on in the second half because yeah. suddenly the crowd just lifted picked and you up. could see that the players picked up and I thought Rashford, thought Garnacho in particular, I thought were, were outstanding. So, yeah, like you said, the crowd have been brilliant. They have stuck by him and, and the team and, and they really sort of pushed them on. And you could see that en there was just more energy and intensity in the second half that there's been games that we just haven't seen that. But the thing is as well, you, you don't... And, and this is how far United have fallen is that we're saying it's a good performance against Brentford. That's not what they're judged on. Mm. That's not their league. Their league's the top four, or yeah. should be the top four. So when, when a tough game comes up in the, in the next couple of weeks, what are we going to be sat here saying? What's the, 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 the talk going to be about Garnacho, about Rashford as well? It's OK doing it against Brentford at home. It's doing it in away conditions when it's really difficult. It's doing it when you're playing a big team at home and that you're really needed. That's when we need to judge Man Manchester United and, and the players. Stephen Warnock says he's on borrowed time. Eric Ten Hag would say that's fairy tales and lies, is, is what he said, because that was his response, because yeah, all over the international break was, that you know... This is win or bust for him. He, he, he's adamant he's got the support of United's leadership. What do you make of this? Can this all carry on? I think we can only believe what, what he's saying, that he's saying that he is backed from the ownership and that they have got this sort of smooth communication, that, that he's saying that they're all on the same page, they all want the same thing. And I suppose we've just got to believe what, what we hear from that because we know that Manchester United have... have change the structure, they, they want to be better off the field, which is then going to help on the field. But then we also know that in the summer they were looking for an alternative to, to Ten Hag. So that must be difficult for him. All he can do now is just try to improve the performances, try to improve the results and, and hope that the backing of them, that they stuck with him, they did give him money to then go and, and buy new players, will pay off. Mm. Uh, first Premier League goal of the season for Rasmus Hoyland after his return from injury. We, we've spoken a lot about lack of goals for Manchester United being their problem. It's a lovely finish. The layoff to him was equally delectable. <laughs> um, so, is there, a, is there a sense that, that it, as far as goals are concerned, him back, scoring like that, they've turned the corner, everything is great? Not yet. OK. Uh, I, what I love about it is, is the confidence to, to dink it, to have that finish. That shows that it's a player who still believes in himself. Um, he'll get them opportunities. I, yeah, listen, the, the opportunities have been few and far between um, for him this season. But given the opportunity there, it's a magnificent finish. But again, with all due respect, it's Brentford at home. It's when, you, when the big occasions arise and it's can you do them under bigger pressure situations. So it's a good half of football for United, but 
that's not a corner turned yet. It's a good result for them and it's something that they can build on. But you have to build on it. We can't be sat here next week going, they've gone back again. That's where they've been so far with under Eric Ten Hag. They seem to be progressing, progressing, then they go back. Progress, 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 just back. And that's the that's been the way it's been under him so far. So they've got to take bigger steps. If you were to sit here at the beginning of the season and look at United and who they'd signed and Chelsea and the players that they'd signed, both teams have spent a lot of money. There's more pro- there's more progress at Chelsea in a shorter space of time. Yeah. The month following the beginning of December is interesting. Arsenal, Manchester City in there and then Newcastle and Liverpool at the turn of the year. Now, what about Brentford? Uh, no smoke without fire or fairy tales and lies? Because Thomas Frank is one of the names that had been linked to Old Trafford. He was one of the candidates. Was he? Fairy tales and lies <laughs> or truth to it? Don't know. Uh, to replace Ten Hag in the summer too. Can you see why? And if so, how did uh, a supposed audition go at Old Trafford? Yeah, well, we obviously don't know, do we? We're not, we're not privy to, to all of those things. But I think what I can say is that we know Thomas Frank's a very good manager. The amount of times that we've praised his decisions, whether that's tactical tweaks, the, the changes where he's brought on substitutes at the right time and it's really had a, an impact in the game. The fact that they've found this ability and way to score the, the first goal, score really early goals. I think it's six consecutive games where they've been able to, to do that. That's a lot of work on the, the training ground, players that have come into him, we've said, look how that he's improved them and, and developed them. So you certainly look at Thomas Frank and say he's certainly the, the all-round um, package, but Brentford certainly won't want to want to lose him, I'm sure, what, what he's done to that side. Yeah, I, I've been fortunate enough to be sort of in and around his company a few times and, and see his training methods and how he is. He's very well respected by the players. He's got an aura about him, which is dominant in, 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 the, in the terms of the players respect him and he's the boss, but he's also got a likeable side to him as well and a calmness to him, which I think players like as well. We won't know until he gets put in a, a bigger job whether he's able to, to manage that situation tactically and at, uh, the pressures of yeah. a big club. But everything tells you that he would be because, because of his character and his persona and the way he carries himself. I really like him. I think he's a, a, a great manager. Um, I think he's done an incredible job at Brentford. The budget that they've got and the, the way that he has them playing, I think he's, uh, he's a top, top guy. But that is a really good point about managing the, the pressure of, of the massive clubs, the likes of, yeah. of Manchester United, Liverpool, where the, it, it's, it is scrutiny, isn't it, every single game. We say that with Ten Hag, it's, you know, they've won, we scrutinise it and we say, well, how have they won? Could they have done better? They lose and it's the pressure's on. So how do you then deal with that? If Brentford lose three or four games, we're not, it's not as intense scrutiny, is it? So it's a completely different mindset. But what we've seen, he's certainly got the ability to, to manage it at no. any level. Rob, we're not done. We have more quick hits. <laughs> Manchester United had come from behind at the half to beat Brentford 2-1. Rob, was Ten Hag right in talking about lies, fairy tales, and noise when they've snapped their uh, winless streak? I don't know. It keeps coming back, doesn't he? The fact that they're down the order and they're not on the back page or the inside back page of the newspapers this weekend maybe suggests that he may have a slight point. When When it comes to lies, I don't know. He probably thinks they're all lies about his future. Fairy tales, well, Manchester United is always about fairy tales of theatre and dreams and stuff like that. And noise. If you're the manager of Manchester United, you have to get used to the noise there. But they, they just edged it just about did enough this weekend. Can, they? can I make a suggestion, though? Mm-hmm. I think, first of all, we should be talking about Marcus Rashford being more effective on the right. I thought that was a great move from him. Mm-hmm. We should be talking about Hoyland's finish. We should be talking about uh, Garnacho's goal. What... What strikes me, though, he kind of creates this rod for his own back. But he got so angry when um, when Matthijs de Ligt, when he, he, he Matthijs somehow hurt himself with that weird challenge that he did. He's bleeding from the top of his head. And twice the referee made him go off the pitch to get medicated. And then he wasn't there for the Brentford goal five minutes into first half injury time. And he got so angry because he was off the pitch being medicated. I mean, and he said it was about, oh, but it was dried blood. Does this make any sense to you? 
Uh, not really. It's like saying you've got dried coffee, haven't you? If you put water into coffee, it makes it kind of coffee and the, the coffee spills you... all over you. And, it, you know, it always rains in Manchester. We know that. So if you've got dry blood on your head and you get a bit of perspiration, whatever, it's going to come down. Maybe this sums up my, my, my family went to the stadium for the first time in a long time to Old Trafford last week and they were getting wet from from the stand. And this is a little bit like the, yeah. the, the, the stand situation. And they they patched up his head. They didn't do a good enough job. And, it, and it, the blood kept seeping through again. And maybe when they made all of these cuts, they also laid off the cuts man or the cuts woman <laughs> behind these I days. Mean, <laughs> well, when people get head injuries, you see them come back out and they normally have bandages stuff on their head. Yeah. With him, it looked like they, they, they stuck on a tiny... I don't... I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, don't know you, if you, Dr. You, Nick Riviera was... <laughs> Filling in on the sidelines, but no, I would have a go at your medical staff who can't patch him up in such a way that where, where he doesn't start bleeding again from his head. I mean, it's as simple as exactly. that. Exactly. You, you look stupid, don't you? You come out and these days there's all kinds of colors and whatever, but, but you don't look as stupid as no. you do conceding a goal when the guy's on the, on the touchline getting a little plaster on his head. Jamie Carragher has praised Manchester United's Rasmus Hodgland, who is starting to look a player, according to the former Liverpool defender. Hodgland has had a mixed time at United so far after signing from Atalanta for 72 million last summer, scoring 16 goals in all competitions but struggling to find the consistency many had hoped for. He missed the start of this season due to injury, but is now fit and firing and is expected to lead the United line as they look to turn their fortunes around on the back of their worst ever start to a Premier League season. The 21-year-old scored his second goal of the campaign against Brentford at the weekend with a fine chip to score the winner, and Carragher is starting to like what he sees from the United number 9. Speaking on Sky Sports, he heaped praise on Hodgland, suggesting he could be the answer to the forward problems United have had in recent years. Hodgland, I think has starting to look a player, Carragher said. I was really impressed with him in Porto a couple of weeks ago, he put a real shift in. He added there's real talent in the front three, but the man who gets the winning goal, I think has starting to look a player. United will hope that the Brentford victory can give them a foot up in improving their fortunes this season. Before the game, they had gone five matches without winning, and things had looks ominous when Ethan Pinnock headed the visitors in front from a corner in controversial fashion. But Alejandro Garnacho scored at the start of the second half on the back of a brilliant cross from Marcus Rashford, and Hodgland ensured the point stayed at Old Trafford. Carragher, meanwhile, detailed why he could see a beacon of hope for United coming out of the game. The front three, he began. We talk about Marcus Rashford being better suited on the left, but he played on the right, and I think it's one of his best games we've seen. Garnacho on the left side scores a great goal. I think the combination of that front three is maybe something that can keep them going. Carragher also pointed towards United's front three, with Alejandro Garnacho also scoring at the weekend. Aaron Ramsey, meanwhile, praised Marcus Rashford, who provided the assist for Garnacho's strike. Aaron Ramsey, who was working as a pundit for the Sky Sports show, added on Rashford I think has a fantastic player when you get him on the ball. He can produce lovely little passes and opportunities. He had a massive impact on the game, especially in the second half. Dimitar Berbatov urges Man United star to get angry ahead of Fenerbahce clash. Dimitar Berbatov has urged Manchester United star Rasmus Hodgland to get angry ahead of Thursday's Europa League clash against Fenerbahce. Hodgland has produced a total of 18 goals across 49 appearances to date since he joined United from Atalanta in a deal worth £72 million in the summer of 2023. The Denmark international has also suffered a number of injury issues since his switch to Old Trafford, with fans keen to see him kick on and go up a level. In order for Hodgland to become an elite-level striker, former United star Berbatov says the 21-year-old needs to adjust his mindset and become more aggressive. I think as a striker he needs to be more demanding and arguing, Berbatov said on Rio Ferdinand's YouTube channel. Not being so nice and just pushing the buttons of some of the players around him. Like give me the ball, asking for the ball, when the ball is not coming because I can see that he was doing some runs behind the defence and then nobody was seeing him. That should make you angry, you have a point to be angry after this one. United boss Eric Ten Hag, meanwhile, feels Hodgland needs to focus on maintaining his fitness and avoid injury problems going forward. He will always score, Ten Hag said at the Football Writers Association Northern Managers Awards on Sunday. What is important is he is keeping fit. 
he picked up so many injuries in the first season and when he stays fit, he will score goals because that is proved in his stats. Hodgland netted the winner in United's 2-1 Premier League victory over Brentford last time out. He has been limited to six appearances across all competitions this term due to a hamstring problem. Chris Sutton pinpoints the one change that made all the difference in Man United's win over Brentford. Manchester United brought an end to their recent malaise with a 2-1 victory over Brentford on Saturday. Eric Ten Hag's side were abject in the first half and were a goal down at the break before Alejandro Garnacho and Rasmus Hodgland turned it around after the restart. Ten Hag's future had been in doubt during the international break and the win against Thomas Frank's team quietened the noise around Old Trafford, at least until they take on Jose Mourinho's Fenerbahce in the Europa League on Thursday. It's all kicking off co-host Chris Sutton praised United for their performance on the latest episode of Mail Sports Podcast and revealed the one key change they made to secure the victory. Sutton was also critical of Ten Hag's comments in the lead-up to the Brentford game, where the United manager hit out at Ferretales and lies being written about him and the team. I do think at times he doesn't help himself, the Premier League winner said. The nonsense before the game in the press conference about people making up stories and fairy tales. I don't know why he brought that up. Everybody is looking at Manchester United. They're looking at that they spent 600 odd million. Has in his third season. It's about how the team performs on the pitch and people are judging Manchester United.